Hello, my friends and fellow travelers. My name is Pierce. This is Tales from the Road. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today, we're obviously talking about the beautiful Central American nation of Costa Rica. This is a really cool place, a place I've spent time, a place where I have friends, and a place that is often overlooked as far as the amazing, diverse tourist opportunities that you can do here. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before you go. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of the good, a little bit of the bad, what to avoid, what to do, the hidden gems, and everything in between. If that sounds good, come along for the ride to Costa Rica. Vamos, mi amigos. First and foremost, let's get into a little cultural and geographical background of Costa Rica so we can understand this place that we're going to visit a little bit better. Costa Rica is truly a Central American nation right at the heart of this crossroads between North and South America. It has Nicaragua to its north, it has Panama to its south. The history of Costa Rica, as well as the greater Central America, is really defined by pre-indigenous tribes that lived in this region before Spanish colonialism, and then the colonial period, which lasted for 300 years. The Spanish colonial period is what really gave rise to the main Costa Rican cities, the main staples of the greater culture of Costa Rica, the language, the religion, and everything else in between. That doesn't mean that you can't find indigenous communities within Costa Rica, it just isn't the predominant culture you'll find there. The reason why many tourists come to Costa Rica specifically is not necessarily to see and explore their culture, but to see and explore their incredibly biodiverse nature and amazing beaches, mountains, volcanoes, and everything in between. Costa Rica offers some of the best nature reserves anywhere in the world and hosts an incredible diversity of flora and fauna. For me, Costa Rica is incredibly interesting because for many Americans, it's just a place to go to the beach, but it actually is an incredibly diverse country with a long story with a lot going on. So let's talk about that in the more practical section. First and foremost, with regarding visas, Costa Rica is pretty easy for most people. All Americans get 90 days visa-free entrance into Costa Rica, and you're probably going to arrive in one of two airports, either Liberia if you're visiting the north of Costa Rica, or San Jose if you're planning on visiting the center or south of the country. When booking a trip to Costa Rica, make sure that you pick your destination first before you pick your airport, because if you fly to San Jose but you want to visit the north of Costa Rica, it creates a lot of hassle within your trip, and vice versa if you want to visit the south of Costa Rica and you fly to Liberia. Something to think of before you buy tickets. So speaking of getting around the country, the transportation in Costa Rica is not incredibly easy. Of course, you can do internal flights flying from San Jose to Liberia and Liberia to San Jose. And then other than that, you are stuck with tourist buses or buses to get from city to city around the country. The tourist buses are not the cheapest, honestly. So you can also take local buses, although the local bus connections are a bit confusing and complicated, depending on if you speak Spanish and depending on the day and of course the arrival time because sometimes buses don't run on schedule in Costa Rica. When you're traveling within cities, you can of course take taxis, which I always recommend when you travel to South and Central America. You can use taxi apps in Costa Rica, although Uber has actually been outlawed, although people do technically still use Uber. Um, you just normally have to sit in the front seat so you look like a friend as opposed to a client riding in the back seat. Personally, I actually had a pretty negative experience with the transportation in Costa Rica. I was supposed to get a bus to the north from San Jose Central Station. The taxi driver informed me that the bus I was waiting for didn't exist and that he would drive me to Alajuela, which is a city uh, just a little bit north of San Jose where I could find another bus. The taxi driver, of course, said he would drive me there. He seemed like a nice guy, so I got in the taxi. Uh, just about 30 minutes later, I had a $90 taxi bill, which I certainly did not consent to, and he dropped me at a bus station where there was no bus that ever came. For even the most experienced travelers, these mistakes can understandable Spanishes if you just like are learning Spanish. They speak not incredibly fast and they don't have a crazy accent twist like Argentinians, like Mexicans, like Spanish people from Spain. Costa Rican Spanish is the most baseline Spanish, so it's awesome if you're learning and they're great people to practice with because everyone is so friendly and so nice, also very, very helpful. The whole spirit of Costa Rica goes with their one saying, which you'll see on a lot of tourist stuff, which is Pura Vida Mai, which is basically like, life is good, bro. And it's true. The weather is always nice. The vibe is always good. The beer is always cold and the beaches are always beautiful. Costa Ricans really do embody that spirit, even though life in Costa Rica for local people is not necessarily the easiest because of the weird price inflation due to all the tourism. Safety. While Costa Ricans are amazing people, that doesn't mean it isn't a Central American country, and it doesn't mean that Costa Rica is the safest place in the world. If you go to San Jose, Liberia, or any big city in Costa Rica, 
there are gangs, there is violence, and it can be very sketchy, especially in the downtowns in the nighttime or even during the daytime, to be honest. Uh, I, I would actually stayed 10 days in San Jose and I booked a place in the downtown ignorantly, not knowing that in Central and South America, downtowns are typically not the place you want to stay. And it was terribly sketchy and I really did not enjoy my time that much. Uh, many people, of course, go to the tourist zone, spend time on the coast, and I think in Costa Rica, that's probably what you should do because the cities in Costa Rica are really nothing to see and also can be a bit sketchy. The rules for traveling in Central and South America are pretty basic. Know where your wallet is, know where you're staying, don't walk around places where you shouldn't be, don't look like a tourist overtly, and just have your head on a swivel because People will steal from you, people can hurt you, not that they all do, but it is always a possibility when traveling in this region. I actually have worked with a lot of Costa Ricans for my job, and a lot of my Costa Rican clients actually complain that the government is not doing enough to provide safety and security within the cities in Costa Rica. There's a sort of saying in Costa Rica that the people living in cities actually live in prison while the criminals roam free. And you'll see this in Costa Rica because a lot of people, and this is not just Costa Rica, but all of Central and South America, a lot of people's homes actually have bars in front so people can't break into their house. They'll have a gate, maybe with another gate, and then on the windows there's bars, which for good reason uh, is to prevent people from stealing stuff or hurting them or whatever. But it's a truth of Central and South America, and as an American, it's something that's a bit sad to see. Um, but it's just the reality of living there. Now, of course, if you're a tourist and you're on a tourist destination, resort and all this stuff, this really won't affect you. Just make sure you follow the main rules for travel in Central and South America and be aware with where you go and who you talk to. So now we're on to my favorite section, which of course is food. Costa Rican cuisine was actually something completely unknown to me because we don't have a lot of Costa Ricans where I'm from and something that was a little bit more diverse than I was expecting. So if you're in the western half of Costa Rica, a lot of the dishes really resemble what we consider typical Central American or South American food. Lots of rice and beans, which in Costa Rica they call gallo pinto, which they eat for breakfast, you can also have it for lunch. They also have dishes called casados, which is basically like a plate with meat, rice and beans, um, a salad, and then, you know, you can also have some various really interesting um, drinks in Costa Rica because they have this forest which grows fruit that you've probably never seen before. So. The food in general is not very spicy, it's pretty basic, but it is all very good. What I didn't know is that on the eastern side of Costa Rica, the side that borders the Caribbean, they actually have a lot of immigrants that have come from the Caribbean islands. So if you go to a city called Limon or you eat food from Limon, it has a little Caribbean spice flavor to it. Everything's a little bit spicier, it resembles maybe a little bit more Jamaican food, and you can even find people living in that area that speak a type of sort of Jamaican, Spanish, English, Creole combination that is heavily influenced from Car the Caribbean in general. So one side very Spanish, very very Central American, the other side a little bit more Caribbean, a little spicy, a little, uh, little more interesting for me personally because I love spicy food. That being said, and because of the tourist industry, they have a lot of different restaurants to go to. So if you don't want to eat Costa Rican food the whole time you're there, you can find sushi, you can find Chinese food, you can find Indian food, you can find uh, American hamburgers and all that stuff. So if you're interested more in that, they have it for you, for sure. So as a final note for this video, I'm going to tell you some things that I love to do, also things that I've been recommended by my Costa Rican friends, so that you can pick some amazing things to do that maybe are really on the tourist track or totally not. It really depends on what you're looking for. Costa Rica is a really touristy place, and me personally, I don't like touristy places. So I always try to do something a little bit different than the more beaten tourist path, and these are some of my favorites that I found. As far as national parks go, this is something you have to do in Costa Rica, and some of the best ones include Parque Corcovado, all the way in the south, Parque Manuel Antonio, which has, I think, one of the most biodiverse um, national parks in the entire planet, if not the most biodiverse park in the entire planet. So that one is definitely great. This is all if you're going to the southeastern part of Costa Rica. Another place that is incredible that I actually did go to is called Monte Verde, which they also call the cloud forest of Costa Rica. Costa Rica, while being on the equator, is very much mountainous. So that means they've got like pockets of sort of like permanently, not cold, cold is the wrong word, but permanently sort of middle temperature. And because they have so much um, humidity in the air, it creates these clouds and fog that sort of hugs the mountains. I've never really seen anything like it. You can drive down the mountain and it can be 90 degrees, super hot, super humid. And then you drive up the mountain and it can be cloudy and foggy and like, 
you know, like maybe like 55 degrees, something like very unique to Costa Rica. And I think that's what makes the sort of nature so interesting to explore. You can of course also go all the way to the north to Juanacaste, which is a province that borders Nicaragua. And that area is extremely hot. The hottest part of the whole country, I think, goes up to like 100, 105 every day. It's flatter, it's drier, and they have really vast mountains and volcanoes. Um, it's something very particular. So every place you go in Costa Rica is biodiverse, is unique, interesting, and you can really have so many different visuals and vibes all in the same country. It's really incredible. The next thing that you have to do is you have to see volcanoes. It doesn't matter which volcano you go to. The most recommended is Adenal, right by Monte Verde, which is the cloud forest. And I went there. It's extremely unique, extremely interesting. It's actually still an active volcano, and you can do amazing hikes in that region. I totally recommend it. But if you can't make it to Adenal, uh, just because it's far, or you don't have the funds, or you don't really want to, and you want to go to a closer volcano, there are also many other volcanoes in the north, in Juanacaste, and in the Central Valley region by San Jose. I went to another volcano called uh, Volcano Irasu, um, also very interesting, huge crater volcano, um, and it's cold, so make sure to bring a jacket, because the higher you go up in Costa Rica, it can actually be quite chilly. Uh, the volcanoes are unique and interesting and something really worth taking your time to get outside and go see. Next, you have to go see some beach and get some beach vibes because that's like really what Costa Rica is all about, whether that's going to be on the Caribbean east side, like in places like Puerto Viejo, which is all the way in the southeast near the border of Panama, or the Nicoya Peninsula, which is in the northwest of the country, which you can go to places like Tamarindo, which is the biggest backpacking hostel place. Um, as well as other places within the Nicoya Peninsula, including Montezuma, which is an amazing kind of like hidden beach all the way in the south of the peninsula. You can also go to the very traditional old school tourist spots like um, Jaco and Uvita, where a lot of American expats live. Um, I wouldn't necessarily spend my whole vacation there, but uh, they are beautiful regardless. Nice sunsets, cold beers, lots of options, lots of international restaurants, things to do, ATV rides, zip lining trips uh, into the forests, you know, all the tourist stuff is all in these locations. So if that's what you want to do with your trip, definitely not a bad place to do it. Probably the most expensive places you're going to go to in the country though. So for me, I'm a city and culture traveler. And ironically speaking, I am not going to recommend you to go to any city in Costa Rica for more than one day. So it's not to say that the cities are bad in Costa Rica and I don't want to give you a bad impression. I just thought they were not great. And when you talk to Costa Ricans, they also will tell you that they're not great. So I'm going to say don't waste your time because I wasted way more time in cities than I should have. San Jose uh, has an interesting city center with, you know, it has nightlife, it has cafes, but kind of a scary city, especially at night. And I didn't like it. Um, there's a city near San Jose called Alajuela, which has a much better old town. So if you want to see a nice old town, go to Alajuela. If you want to see a big church, go to a city called Cartago. This is all in the San Jose Basin, and there's a lot to see there. Although, just don't waste your time going to the cities. They're not that special, they're not that unique, and they're not actually that historic, um, having really only history for less than you would find, for example, in Philadelphia in the United States. Um, Liberia in the north, again, a small city, small little old town, really not much to see. It's really just a launching point for going into the more nature reserve areas of Costa Rica. Also, as I said, there's the more of the Caribbean area centered around a city called Limon. Limon is also a bit dangerous and a bit scary, so I don't necessarily want anyone to go there on behalf of this recommendation. What you should do in Costa Rica is see spectacular outdoors things, save the city travel for another country. So that's going to do it for me in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really love Costa Rica. I have good friends from Costa Rica. I can't recommend it highly enough because the stuff you see there is so unique and so deeply interesting to connect with nature. I'm not a huge nature guy, but Costa Rica was definitely worth it. That being said, make sure to like and subscribe. It always helps me out on the channel. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok with my Project 197, where I cook a dish from every country in the world. I haven't made a dish from Costa Rica yet, but I'm planning on probably making gallo pinto, which is the national dish, the thing that people love deeply. So that's going to do it for me. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And of course, pura vida mai.